Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope everything's well in your part of the world. Um, welcome back to another edition of Jet Scale Models. I'm going to be continuing with this Gaz AAA truck build, and uh, fortunately, we're starting to get near completion. Um, and with this episode, I'm going to be able to get the wheels on, which is a major milestone and it'll definitely improve the look of this thing. Definitely beef it up. So without further ado, let the sauce begin. Well, here you have some of the Tamiya Buff paint, which is my favorite for making uh, a dust age. I'm gonna be using a different uh, paint airbrush than what I usually use. This is a Pash H model, and it's good for uh, doing a more basic general more volume and uh, bigger pigments. So I'm just gonna hose this mixture down. What I've done is I've mixed the Tamiya Buff with a vast quantity of water. I just wanna have a really, really thin down layer of Tamiya Buff and water that goes on here. And I'm concentrating on the lower section here as you can see the rest of the vehicle isn't even together yet but that doesn't matter at this point because I just want to get the wheels on so to do that number one I'm going to concentrate on the underneath part of the vehicle and then when that's all aged I'll age and weather the wheels separately and then they'll go on and then I'll come back later and I'll put the doors on and the roof on and the front engine panels on and then I'll give everything an overall aging. So here you can see I'm just using a brush with a little bit of water on it to reactivate some of the paint and move it around a little bit. That's the advantage of working with this so thin down is that the water reactivates it until it has an opportunity to harden and cure and uh, so here I am just moving stuff around and taking it off where I don't like it and uh, got some on the inside here which isn't necessarily a bad thing but I don't want it to be too strong this vehicle is going to be depicted as if it's just basically on a dusty road so we're going to give it a light dust age the water is able to reactivate the Tamiya paint because it's on there so thinly Now I can come in there with some of the mix already on the brush, the same stuff that I was using with the airbrush. I can actually just paint it where I want it now. I'm always being careful not to put it where I don't want it. And if I get too much on, I take it away. See here, I'm removing some of the excess that's on the seat and on the running board. Now I'm going to go back into the bottom part here, this time with just the brush and some dabbing of solution. For me, when I do my weathering, it's all about layers. If you look at real vehicles that have been out on the road, they don't get washed every day, and the dirt and dust and mud and grime don't deposit in just one day. It builds up over time. So 
so there will be different layers of various colors and different textures. So each one of these steps is not necessarily the final step. It's just one of the steps. taking off the excess as it dries. You can see here where it is and I'm taking it off with some water on a Q-tip. I'm pretty happy with how things are turning out right now. I still have more work to do with it and maybe add some heavier deposits here and there later on. At this point, I'm going to go back into it with the airbrush and some highly diluted Tamiya. Just to maybe give it a once over again here. You can see I'm using my uh, finer airbrush for this. It gives me more control over where everything is actually going. So here I'm trying to get up underneath everything, give it a good soaking. You have to remember that I've really diluted this paint. It's not very strong, but it is pretty strong in that when it dries, it actually is quite noticeable. So yeah, I'm getting uh, one of my little containers I got off of Amazon and I can put the excess paint into there and uh, store it. And now I'm going to move on to the wheels. So at first I'm just using my hand to hold it, but um, it's just not convenient to get everything. So I'm going to have to pull out one of my homemade parts holder. Yeah, these things are actually uh, quite handy. I made them uh, myself by ordering uh, some alligator clips and some cocktail sticks off of Amazon and then just putting the cocktail stick in there and then using a pair of pliers to uh, squeeze down the end there and now it's a nice cheap little parts holder for when I paint. So I'm giving everything a really good soaking and I can use the airbrush actually to move the, the paint around where I don't want it and I can actually blow off excess. see how it really uh, flows into the uh, recesses and along the ridges. So I like to place them flat like that so that there isn't a pooling in uh, on the bottom of the tires because that wouldn't look great. So I try to give a, 
an opportunity for it to all dry evenly. And the best way to do that is just to lie it down on its back there. Don't need no preacher man to tell me right from wrong Don't need no real estate to prove where I belong Don't need no passenger to tell me where to go Don't need no travel guide to go and steal the show Just me in the open road, got it going on My lights tell me where I'm going to The dust tells me where I've been the motel is my living room The bar is my bed, you know I see Just me in the other road Got it going on Just me in the open road Got it going on yeah. Open road can be cruel sometimes No place to call your own Love affair with the howling winds Gave my heart to roam squirting a little bit more on the inside of the cab so I can give it a nice dirty look you know the soldiers and drivers I'm sure they would be tracking in mud with their boots and everything so this here is a bit of a mistake so while all those wheels were drying I went on to working on this and I just got to tell you, um, don't do it like this. When I was reading the instructions, the way the uh, drawing is, there's these arrows that are pointing from F4 to A3, and I thought that's where they were supposed to go, but no, they actually go on to the fender. These little parts here are on the PE fret, and... Uh, they're very tiny. And here I've made myself a little uh, bending jig of some sort with just a piece of evergreen square strip. And uh, it looks okay, but uh, I really wasn't too happy with how that turned out. But it's. I could have put these on earlier when everything was not painted and that might have been the better way to go but because this truck was new to me I just wanted to keep all the really fine little parts off until the majority of the truck had been built and I had figured out the lay of the land somewhat next time I will definitely mount them on the raw plastic as opposed to the painted surface here so I'm just taking it off with like really light slices. I don't try to take it off all in one go. So here I'm trying a different technique where I've taken a piece of rectangular evergreen stock, put a little drop of CA glue to hold it in place. And then I made another little sort of die that would go on top of that to squish it down. But the uh, plastic is just too soft for it to give me the results I wanted, but I'm going to live with it. If I wanted to do that again, I'm going to just use my, uh, I have a tool for making uh, grab handles for tanks. So I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but that's probably a, a better way to do it. So yeah, those gray pieces there, they're like a, little hooks that are meant to hold that engine access panel in place and that they should be mounted on the fender not this panel 
It was just a bit confusing with the mini art instructions, unfortunately. So yeah, here's this part I talked about in an earlier step that I, I didn't know where where it was. Like it wasn't indicated, but it was actually there. So these are looking pretty nice. I may do some more work on them, but we'll see. So yeah, the mounting point for the front wheels is just really, really uh, not very robust, to put it mildly. You basically have a little tab that fits on the top of the axle, and then there's a flat area that's supposed to go up against it as well. And the only thing that holds that in place is glue. There's no key there's no pin and hole that would make it stronger. So next time I think I might try and uh, scratch something up where I've got a pin drilled into the uh, axle and a hole in the brake drum. And that might give it some more strength. In the end, I was able to make it hang on really good, so... It's not that big of a problem, but. And you can see here for an example of like why I like to build in sub assemblies. Like that brake drum has got its own aging, right? And uh, if I were to do it all in place, I probably wouldn't be able to make it look as individual and separate from the rest of the vehicle. Not that everybody's going to be able to see that brake drum, but as an example of sub-assembly building. I've always built in sub-assemblies since I was a kid. And uh, I was a kid in the 60s and early 70s, so... I think that comes from when I was building airplanes more. But I use it in all of my work. So here I'm trying to just dry fit everything and in the end it didn't work out and I decided to use some of the Tamiya thin glue. The glue actually helped lubricate everything into place as well because it melts the plastic slightly and But I don't use too much. One lesson I've learned in model building, and I'm still learning, is that I should use as little glue as possible to make anything stick. Because I may have to come back later because of some oversight or I didn't understand something properly. And it would be nice to be able to take it apart. So yeah, I'm giving everything a really good soaking here of the glue just so that everything will stick. Hmm. I don't think I can really see it well enough there, so let's flip it over and try now. One of the difficulties of having this vehicle being so fragile is that there's no real great place to hold everything without maybe breaking it so you have to be very careful all right that's really starting to look really nice and beefy i like it just making sure everything is perpendicular Before I set it down and make sure everything dries in the right position. This is one of the last little pieces for the uh, engine bay area. It's 
the holder for the air filter. So after I clean it up, I'm going to glue it onto the air filter part and uh, paint both in black and then glue it in place. Next time when I build one of these gas trucks from MiniArt, I'm going to definitely try to do more of a wiring with the uh, engine. But it's better to do that before you put it in the, in the truck. Here I'm just cleaning up one of the supports that go in the uh, front of the engine bay area from the front body panel to the radiator. I guess there's some kind of strengthening bars. So I'm just going to glue them in place raw like this and then just paint them in place. I decided to use a gray rather than a black just to give it a variation. I really like this kit even though it's given me some problems along the way. And I'll have to be very more careful when I build the next one. But I've learned a lot of lessons along the way that uh, hopefully I can make use of when I build another one. When I was a kid and I used to read things like uh, fine scale modeler and whatnot, I would actually think these guys would build a practice one first and then they would build another one that was for the article itself. I guess that really wouldn't work out with the uh, deadlines and timetable, so. So yeah, this is some AK acrylic paint. Just gonna paint this up gray, and that's pretty much it, I guess. So yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little update. I've got a few more installments coming uh, just to finish this off. So hopefully you'll drop by and check those out. I know it's not as exciting as some of the builds that are going out on in the world, but uh, it's been a nice experience for me. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to building another one. So I would just like to say I appreciate your visit. And if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please consider liking and subscribing. I also possess a Patreon page, so with that, in the meantime and in between time, that's another edition of Jet Scale Models.